Hi you guys, Heather Henschel with Heather Henschel Method here and guess what we're going to be talking about today? Money, honey, yes. Um, why am I going to discuss money? Because today I want to help you get clarity on what you can do in order to transform your money. Like, do you want more money? Do you want to live a life of abundance? If you do these four things I'm about to tell you, you will live an abundant life because you are now getting outside the box, you're becoming responsible. So let's dive into these details. Okay, number one is identifying your current beliefs about money. You have to know like what your beliefs are. You know, I, I hear a lot of manifestation coaches who just, and I'm not trying to at all judge them, you know, they're, I love manifestation coaches because they're actually giving so much free content um, trying to help you, you know, like I think that is beautiful, beautiful. But the one thing that's missing is starting with a method. And yes, we can visualize, we can do all this stuff and um, journal, but if we're still feeling ashamed and lack, like lack of, um, we have that mindset, like we aren't going to give enough or we're never going to have enough. Um, we spend our money and it's never coming back to us or we're afraid to invest money because we'll never see it again. Um, it'll be taken from me. If we have that, you know, lack mindset, then that's what's going to happen. So where did your limiting beliefs come from? A lot of times we pick up these beliefs from our families and it can be, you know, good habits or bad, right? Did your parents, were they consistent with their spending? Like, did they, uh, you know, show how to invest? Did they talk about that with you? Did they uh, overspend? Did you watch them overspend and then they would fight about money all the time? That's what I saw personally in my household. My parents constantly fought about money and then one parent would be like, uh, your mom spends too much or your dad spends too much, but it was mostly my mom spent way too much money. That's why we were broke all the time. My dad always used that word, we were broke. But I would see them spend money on high ticket items and I was very confused about that. So growing up, I thought I had to have high ticket items uh, and spend my money you know, just unconsciously. And that's actually what happens. We start to form these beliefs and now we're spending money and it's not intentional. It's just like, whatever. We're not even knowing we're doing it because we're in such a routine. We're in such a habit. And, you know, until we can identify why we're not being responsible with our money, we're just going to keep forming these habits. We're just going to keep piling on, compounding interest, with these bad habits that we are doing. And if you can identify your limiting beliefs around money, that's a really big step in the right direction because now you can see, okay, this is that's how my parents were. Oh my gosh, I'm taking on a lot of my parents' um, energy and how they handled and treated money. I don't want that for me or my family. Now you actually can start breaking that generational cycle. That is exactly what I'm doing with my family. I had to really take time to identify my limiting beliefs and how I was spending. And while I was doing that, I took responsibility. I didn't play the pity party. I didn't play like, oh, that's just, my parents taught me this and it's their fault and, um, and not take responsibility for my own actions. As an adult, we have choices now. And so that's why it's so important to identify these beliefs first before moving forward into doing the next steps I'm going to be talking about because you wanna sit there, look at this belief, and you wanna change it. How are you going to adapt to this change? How are you going to stay committed to this change? Um, and there's gonna be lots of little tips I'm gonna give you moving forward. So identify is number one. Number two is creating a budget. So. Now that you can identify your habits, your patterns around money and how they were formed, now you can just make a simple Excel spreadsheet. This is what I do. It does not have to be the hardest thing ever. Like I don't understand how people have numerous. Now, if that's fun for you, go ahead, have at it. I just want one for my savings and one for my checking. That's all I need. Um, 
And then my savings changes all the time. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And But you wanna have a spreadsheet, something that you can see where your money's going constantly. So um, there's probably, there's also a lot of apps I know out there that you can track your spending. I just, like I said, I'm old school Excel spreadsheet. I, every single month, I just redo it. Um, today is actually March 1st, so what I'll do is I'll go into an Excel spreadsheet, make a duplicate, just redo some of the stuff in there. Um, I start, what I do is I start at my balance. So my current balance on March 1st, and then whatever has to be taken out, um, whatever is like withdrawn from my account. Like, so when you have an Excel spreadsheet and you could start seeing where you're spending your money, this is going to be a game changer because you're gonna say, wow, like, I am spending way too much money going out to eat. So create that Excel spreadsheet and make sure you're tracking your spending to the T, to the T. And if you're, if you get anxiety or you're anxious or anything like that, you're like, your heart starts to beat faster when you have to open up your checking account and you start doing this. I'm going to recommend a few things because I've been there. I used to get anxiety and that's why I never did an Excel spreadsheet. I just didn't care. I didn't want to see my spending. Uh, by the one that is also a limited belief and that is something that needs to be identified and changed. Get that out of your head that you are not worthy enough to create an Excel spreadsheet because you are and you're taking the step to become responsible with your money. So. I would recommend, if you get anxiety, I would recommend playing some soothing music, some jazz. I actually personally like playing jazz when I do money because it's just so, like, upscale. You know what I mean? Like, I live in that feeling of abundance. And when I play it, it just reminds me of, like, a beautiful, fancy restaurant or something, you know, anything like that. So, that's where I put myself in that position. I want to feel abundant and so I make everything abundant around me. I make everything clean and um, organized so I can feel at peace. Do some breathing exercises. Do the box breathing. Breathing in for four, holding for four, exhale out for four, and hold that exhale out for a count of four. So you do that. It's a box breathe. That's why they call it box breathing. Um, super easy to do. It'll slow your parasympathetic nervous system down. It'll put you into a state of calmness, focus, relaxation, and even just talking about it makes me feel calm. Um, and light a candle. If you have, wanna have a glass of wine, have a glass of wine while you do it. Whatever works for you. I personally just drink water, but I'm at the point now where I just go on there put my stuff in and then I'm done. Like I don't have to go through the whole protocol like I used to do because I, I used to get anxiety around that. So do an Excel spreadsheet, you guys. Um, the next one is savings. You need a savings account. So I believe it's like 22% of Americans do not have a savings account or have enough to cover expenses like for three months, like their monthly expenses. Um, and it's really important to have like two months of savings or whatever it may be. It depends on how much you make. It, it truly does. If you're very, very wealthy, obviously you don't have to really worry about keeping a lot in the savings. And most millionaires, they're not doing savings accounts. They're doing investing. Uh, that's what they want to do. Some will do like, you know, bonds and T-bills. And at the end, I'm going to kind of go over some of this with you guys. Um, but having a savings account is necessary we have one it is important to have one um i'm not going to tell you what to do but if you have a savings account like where you're you know you're making like 12 cents every month um switch it over guys switch it over i'm going to tell you at the very end so stay tuned to the best savings accounts where you're going to be earning 
a ton of money every single month, depending on how much you put in there. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so create a savings account. You want to make sure you start just trying to get at least one month's worth of your expenses. If, if this is too hard and you're constantly over budget every single month where you can't even save, you're gonna have to really, really look deep at that. You're gonna have to make sure you know what you're doing because you should not be over budget every month. And if there are things to sell, sell them ASAP. Like do it because you don't wanna be over budget every month. You need a savings account. Like you need something in case of an emergency. And if you're constantly using your credit cards, well, that's not gonna help you because the interest on those are going to be insane, insane. Like we use our credit card every single month, but we pay it off. And that shows really good on your credit report, but it also brings us points, which, hello. So it's really um, a privilege to own a credit card. It's savings account, you guys, if you can just start with $100 a paycheck, you know, even if you're over budget, okay, even if you're in debt, you need a savings. You need a savings. You truly do. So start putting money aside. Even if you're over budget every month, like find out where you can slack back at so you can put that money inside of a savings account. Number four is do not spend on non-essential items. Don't spend money you don't have. You don't wanna do that. Do not spend money you don't have, meaning don't go over your means, meaning if you're over budget every single month, say you bring in like eight grand a month and you're spending 10,000 a month. You're way over budget, okay? That is just, don't do it, you guys. I'm not judging you guys. I just want you to know this from the bottom of my heart. I am not judging you. I want to educate you because I did not have someone like me to educate me on this at all. And I had to learn a lot of this on my own. I had to change my habits on my own. This is why I created methods. This is why I created the Heather Henschel method because I'm like, I'm actually doing methods. Like I'm not doing coaching, coaching, right? So I do coach people, but I, within the coaching, I create methods for them, for each individual because everyone is different. And I have been through every little thing. I have been a single mom working full-time jobs, working jobs after, um, I've been married, working full time, traveling back and forth. I've, now I'm married and I'm a stay at home mom, running a business, entrepreneur, uh, homeschooling my kids. So I've been through all of it, okay? So I know how it is and I know how it is to go over a budget. I know how it is to not feel worthy of having money. And um, I also know how it is to not be responsible with money and what that looks like and what it sounds like because when we're not responsible, we make every excuse in the book as to why we don't have money. When we truly know we're the ones who are exchanging that energy. We're the ones who are, you know, this is our hand, this is your card, right? You're exchanging, that's the energy. Tapping, doing whatever you want with it. but. You're the one who is in control of your money. No one else is. You are. So remember that the next time you go to spend on something that's completely not necessary, what are you going to do with that money? What is it? Like, say it's 200 bucks. Well, this is on sale. I got it for 200. Cool. Put that 200 and throw it on your credit card that you owe. Don't be spending money you don't have. Go. Once you create that Excel spreadsheet for your budget, you can see where you are spending too much on certain things that are non-essential. Things that you can just say goodbye to, things that you can put on hold until you start creating the abundant life that you want. So those are my four tips. This is how you manifest. When you can be responsible with your money, Millionaires, okay? Millionaires, they're not being wasteful with their money, okay? They want to create more money. They're like, they see opportunities and they will invest in opportunities. Sometimes they lose. Sometimes they lose money, but they know 
they gamble of it, but they also have money that's making money um, somewhere else, right? Like they're not just gonna throw money away and lose it all and just like that. They will invest in real estate. They will invest in stocks. Um, I just talked to a client of mine, very, very wealthy client, and he was talking to a, a multi-millionaire and you know, he was telling me, he's like, I asked, what is your secret? Stocks? You know, I talk about stocks sometimes. Um, he has a, a dividend that is a high paying dividend. The client is really big with stocks. He's like, you have to have something like an IRA a stock, something to, you know, for retirement. I love my money and I treat my money like it is working for me and it, I respect it and I'm not going to abuse it and I'm grateful for it. So I changed my mindset instead of overspending, instead of being stressed out, like when I'm stressed out about money, I'm not having that connection with it. And a lot of people grow up to think money is evil, it's dirty, it's this and that, but money is helping you. You have to have money to live. If you can start looking at money as like a friend, um, so, something that supports you, that you can honor. And when you go out and buy fresh vegetables or milk or whatever, eggs, you know, like give gratitude for that. Like when you're emptying out your groceries, like, man, I'm so grateful for the abundance of money that I could have that I could spend on my groceries, okay? Like be in that grateful mindset and start to feel it because you'll start to feel it. Um, I was telling a client the other day about acting like they're a millionaire. How would you treat your money if you're a millionaire, okay? Would you be nervous? Do you feel like you don't ever wanna be a millionaire because you're so afraid of losing that money? Well, that's a lack of mindset. You have a limiting belief around that. So look at that. What is that limiting belief? Why are you so afraid? Was, did your parents talk about money, losing it all the time? It could very well be, right? So millionaires treat their money like I was saying, they invest. They write their own checks out. They know where their money is going all the time. Like they're very smart with their money and they make really good decisions and choices and they make them like that. They make them like that. The most successful people, they don't have time to go, well, hmm, let me get back to you. No, no, they don't, they use their intuition like no other and it's not off of an emotion. They're like listening, okay, yep, that feels right. Um, or they already know how much money they have in order to invest in an opportunity or do something for a cause. Like they can just make that decision like that. Savings account. Okay, I'm gonna give you some ideas. I do not ever put money into, like say you, I don't know, Chase Bank you have, um, USAA, uh, what other ones are there? Um, San Diego Credit Union, whatever you have, don't use your savings account because you're getting nothing. Your money's sitting there. Use a high yield interest savings account, okay? You want a high yield interest savings because you're getting money, right? Like imagine all the money you can accrue from just letting money sit there. So say you have $100,000 sitting in this high yield savings account, right? I My math might be off, but I think at a 4.25% annual, you will get 300 and like around $50 a month, 340, something like that. 300 and something a month extra if you have $100,000 saved. Okay, I know that if you're watching this, you probably may not have that amount saved. Um, and even if you did, I would highly recommend not having $100,000 in liquid cash sitting like that. I would invest it. So that's the next topic I'm gonna talk about. But um, make sure you start putting money into this high yield savings account. You wanna try to have at least three months worth of, um, expenses saved in case of an emergency things happen car stuff happens um life happens so make sure that you're being responsible enough to take care of yourself 
and give gratitude to that money that's sitting in your savings account, okay? Um, so yes, yeah, going back to investing is so important. So compounding interest is huge. It's compounding interest. So when you invest in like, we do a lot of S&P 500 because S&P 500 has proven itself over and over and over again with its rate return, 10 to 12%. I think, oh, I wanna say the highest was like 17% one year. Um, and it'll fluctuate. It goes down, it goes up, down and up. But it's been around since 1927, and it has proven itself through wars, too. So people get so afraid when they see their money going down, and they will pull it out. Not good. Not good at all. And this is when the rich get richer. That's the secret. They keep their money in there. They don't pull it out because they know it's a game. They know it's going to go up. And it always goes up, you guys. Always. So... Just remember this, um, like there's a lot of different places that you can open up accounts for, um, I have Schwab, there's Schwab, there's Vanguard, um, oh, there's another one, I forgot what it's called, Schwab, Vanguard, anyway, you can look it up. Um, bonds are really good, T-bills, T-bills, um, you give the money, uh, you pick which one you want, like a three month, um i would do a three to five month that way you get it back sooner into your account but what happens is they give you money for like loaning them money it's beautiful so i have clients who talk to me um who are very well off about investing and i want to know what they're doing right i'm going to ask questions and um one of them is one of them told me about the t-bills so Right now, if you go to home.treasury.gov, um, you can look at, as of yesterday, this is the rates. It changes, I think, every week um, or every couple days, something. I, I forgot, you guys. But um, right now, for like three months, if you get a T-bill, it will be, you'll get a rate return at 5.45. Okay, so say you want to invest $1,000. I don't have a calculator, but um, three months is 5.45. So what you would do is a thousand times 0 0.0545 and whatever that is, you divide it into 12 and then whatever that month you, the new times, whatever um, you get by three. So um, I hope I explained that right. Um, so take a thousand times. 0 0.0545, whatever that number is, you get equals, whatever that number is, divide that by 12, and then whatever you see, whatever number it is, okay, say it's 50 bucks, 50 times three, that will be the total you get back. So what it does, it tells you your bidding date, and then you, um, that's the date that they will withdraw the money, and you'll receive uh, whatever that percentage is at that time. So whatever that interest rate return is, that's what you, you'll receive. Um, but it's fun. Like, it's fun to do that. And it's like, instead of worrying about your money, it's like, you know, you're investing and you're making money on your money. So this is just a fast and easy way to make a lot more um, money than you know, having something sit in your savings account, like, because this is up 5.45 for three months, which is way more than what my savings account is. You see, like it, it's pretty cool. Anyway, that's just, um, those are just some options, a high yield savings account, T-bills, investments, um, I guess investments, obviously you're not going to get that back for a, a while. Um, so my S&P 500, I have an IRA, which I will not pull out of, obviously, because um, that will be penalized highly. I, I watch my parents do that. I will never do that. Um, and again, that was a limited belief that I had that I could not ever, I never wanted to have a retirement fund because it scared me. It scared me a lot because I, I just didn't think it was safe in an account like that because I watched my parents pull from theirs. And... Um, 
then they would fight like, you know, well, you wanted a pull from it. It was just, and it was for vanity. And if you grow up around that, you think, well, I don't want a freaking IRA account. I don't want a retirement account because what's the point? You know, I'm gonna get penalized and my money's not safe. So really trying to identify all those beliefs that you are worthy and having fun, like doing this kind of stuff is fun. Like my husband was mind blown. Like he never had these conversations before and he just absolutely, and what I love is I can use that masculine energy that I have now to tell my husband like, hey, let's invest in this, let's invest in that. And he's so open because he has seen what the investments that I put in have done. Like the return rate, um, the stocks that I've invested in, how much they have gone up. And he trusts me in that. So it's that feminine, masculine energy type thing, right? I'm super feminine, but that is like the masculine part of me, knowing, like investing, being wise about it, learning and educating myself about it constantly and asking people what they're doing. I want to know what you're doing. I want to do that too. So, you know, um, those are just some tips and advice. And I'm going to tell you what, a lot of people don't know about these T-bills. Uh, a lot of this is just for the wealthy. For instance, Warren Buffett, he took all his money and invested it in T-bills and still is because that rate return is insane compared to like you're just leaving it into a checking or whatever it may be, right? So uh, I want to know what successful people are doing. I want to know their way of thinking and you know, so anyways, you guys, those are my tips. Um, I hope that it helped. And anything that I learn that I know millionaires are doing, what they're investing in, I will sure share it with you. Let me not even know any of this stuff until I ask questions and talk to someone who's wealthy because I mean, I was, I was so in the dark with all of that. You know, I was becoming very responsible with my money and what happens is opportunities start to open up for you. Opportunities of people coming into your life to educate you and teach you things, right? So that was like a sign for me, big time, that I needed to start investing. Um, my clients are very big about investing in IRAs, having something set up for your children. So what I love is my Roth IRA account is not taxed on my capital gains. And I learned all this through um, my client, you know, it's just asking people, um, and then going further into educating yourself. So become excited with your money, start to feel your money. And like I said, be friends with it and not have such a negative impact or a negative outlook on it. We want to become mindful of intention around our money, like how we're spending it. Um, and again, always becoming responsible. I use that word a lot. And I feel like there is, you know, we're all going to battle with some type of limited belief at some point and how we can just really identify it and work on it. And sometimes it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. If you can just start identifying those limited beliefs, create a budget, get a high yield savings account and do not spend on non-essential items that you don't need, your life is going to change. And taking accountability, like I said, for your own actions, making sure that um, you don't overspend, you are responsible with your money, you love your money, you honor your money, you respect your money, so your money can do the same for you, and it's an energy exchange. So I hope that this video treated you well. I did get into a little more detail about investing, um, T-bills and all that, because I, a lot of times I talk to people about this, and they have no idea because a lot of times this is like the secret for the rich. Like I'm not kidding when I say that a lot of rich people invest and then they're being told by investors or whatever, like you should do this, like this is a good rate return. And, um, and we don't know, like it's not being told to us. So I want to be the voice for you. And I want to be the voice to tell people, you know, get some ideas. Um, and yeah, do a T-bill. If you have the money for that, you get it back in three months, you'll get a big chunk, you know, to you. It's a great option for very fast cash, um, especially if it's only being tied up for like three months because 
it'll come right back to you. Then you could actually take that chunk that you received and you could put it in your high yield savings account or invest it. We did that, we invested a lot of that money. Um, or you could save it, redo it for another three months and just keep making more money, keep making more money. And then you have enough, a big chunk to invest or do whatever you know um, you wanna do wisely um, for your future or whatnot. So you guys, I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you, uh, make sure that you um, like my video if you found this information useful. So you can find me on Instagram, Monday through Friday. I'm on the stories. I talk about something that's important that I think people should know about, um, that's not really talked about, whether it be money. Just in case someone's going through what I'm going through and they're like, oh my gosh, that could be what I'm going through. Like that could be the same thing. So it's just to, you know, support you and let you know you're not alone. I'm very open, very vulnerable. Um, and yeah, so you guys, uh, you can follow me there and follow me on here if you enjoy this type of content because I will be doing vlogs. I'll be talking like this. Um, I'll guys, I hope that you have a lovely day and I will talk to you guys soon.